Hi, I'm Andrew Bailey, curator of collections here at the Pima Air and Space Museum. Here in the western United States, we are at the height of our wildfire season. And here at the Pima Air and Space Museum, we have one of the world's largest collections of firefighting aircraft. Let me show you some of them. The first here is the Grumman AF-2S Guardian, which was part of a hunter-killer anti-submarine team with the U.S. Navy as a torpedo bomber. After it went out of service in the 1950s, it was modified as a fire bomber. Another aircraft we have is the Fairchild C-119 Flying Boxcar. The boxcar was an early Cold War transport aircraft. After they were retired from service, many of them were used as aerial tankers. They were modified by putting a jet engine on the top of the aircraft to help give the airplane more power. Currently here at the Pima Air and Space Museum, Colson Group has acquired additional C-130s from across the road at davis Mountain Air Force Base. They brought them over here to the museum to restore them to flying condition, where they will be used for future aerial firefighting missions. 1910 saw several large wildfires across the forested areas of the Pacific Northwest. These fires led to the United States forming its first national wildfire policy. As aviation took hold across the nation, it became clear to many that airplanes might have a part in fighting wildfires. In June 1919, Air Service Curtis JN4 Jennings flew fire patrols over the California mountains. Due to the lack of radios, the usefulness and expediency of communicating with firemen on the ground was mixed. This change as radios improved and as air crews could communicate directly to firefighters on the ground. Others recognized that aircraft would be useful in dropping water on fires. One of the first to test this idea was California aerial agricultural operator Charlie Red Jensen. During 1931, he installed two water hoppers on his Jenny and released the water on a fire. In 1953, the prototype Douglas DC-7 airliner flew test flights with a ballast tank filled with water in the passenger cabin to simulate a load of passengers. After one flight, the crew released the ballast water over the runway. The crew and observers on the ground quickly realized they accidentally came upon something. They went ahead and tested using the DC-7 with brush fires with larger release valves with some success. This all came full circle when many years later the retired DC-7s were modified into aerial tankers after they retired from airline service. Behind me is the museum's Douglas DC-7B. It's one of the last piston-engined airliners. It is also the only aerial tanker we have on display that was modified from an airliner and not a surplus military aircraft. You can see the slurry tank on the bottom of the aircraft and the doors where the retardant would drop from the aircraft. Here's a Fairchild C-123K provider. It's another 1950s, 60s and Vietnam era transport plane that was modified into an aerial tanker. You can see, unlike the DC-7, you don't see the slurry tank protruding from the bottom of the aircraft. This aircraft had a big enough and wide enough fuselage that the slurry was all contained within the fuselage. And this is the Lockheed P-2V-7 Neptune, an early Cold War Navy patrol bomber and anti-submarine aircraft. This one served with the Royal Canadian Air Force and then was modified into an aerial tanker after retirement. Here's the museum's Cessna 310. The Forest Service acquired 310s and other twin-engine aircraft as lead aircraft. It is their job to safely direct the larger tankers to their drop zones. Not all of the firefighting aircraft here at the museum are still in their tanker configuration. Some of the aircraft, like the Grumman F7F Tiger Cat, the Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress at the 390th Memorial Museum, and this beautiful consolidated PB4Y2 Privateer have all been restored back to their military configuration. I hope you enjoyed this look at the history of aerial firefighting and some of the aircraft that we have on display here at the Pima Air and Space Museum. Please stay tuned as we'll take a look at some of the other aircraft we have on display here inside some of our hangars.